Have you ever thought about the people and the processes that go into making everyday objects? How about this? What was the last object you held in your hand? Was it a pencil? A cup? Phone? Or maybe a tablet? Can you remember its color? Think of its shape. How did it feel in your hand? Did you think about the design as you held it? Now, maybe you thought about the design of that phone or that computer. But did you think about the design of the table the computer sat on? How about the chair you were sitting on? Uh, one of those swivel desk chairs, but I made it look a little bit like fancier, like for like a law office or just you know a nicer place of business. Um, a lot of this was also um, just considering uh, what uh, people in offices would like to see. Um, that's not really traditional. With the racing stripe from the top and down collapsible armrests and what you do is just push down and then it collapses into this um, space inside and it can fold down again. Um, yeah, this is also can also recline as indicated and kind of kicks out. It's a really fun project to do. I really liked it. Yeah, you're asked for a definition of industrial design. That's what's so difficult about it because there are 100 right answers probably as to what the field encompasses. There are a lot of things you can design in the field, uh, a lot of opportunities for uh, all the way from product design to medical equipment design to um, uh, as some of our graduates have actually gone into interface design occasionally um, and uh, packaging design. Um, so the diversity of the way you can use your skills is what I like about the field. It shocks someone just enough to wake them up without like hurting anyone. So like the prank hand shock thing, it doesn't actually like shock you, it just vibrates really, really fast, which is my intent. So it's like it's something like, oh, that's that's crazy, like to feel in the morning like ah, that just got me up, but it's not something that's gonna be like, I'm in pain, but I'm awake. So uh basically for when you're yeah, outdoors with other people and you might be hiking or just in, in the woods, maybe at night. A sandwich mesh pattern on it. It's very light. You could change it uh, to match your team colors. A fastening system where it's just one um, location behind the ankle where you pull and the rest, it activates these straps and then it allows the, um, the shoe to um, wrap around your foot, um, which is very appropriate for uh, sports such as badminton or volleyball, which requires um, you to be very fast on your feet and very stable on your feet at the same time. And every project's different, um, depending on the brief. You know, you might have to do a different set of things, but generally speaking, the first step is to really like define your problem. Brainstorming with like word maps, things like that. It's like, okay, what products exist right now that solve this problem? Or what products are these users using that are similar? Don't just get stuck on that first idea. Move through several different ideas. Um, and sketch, sketch, sketch. That's the key. From those concepts, you know, just further refining them, going into form studies with, again, more sketching and more sketching, and then like probably a little bit more sketching. So there's like a good volume of different ideas. Then you can start to go back to the user with some of your concepts that you like. Start to refine your concepts. I try to look up um, as many materials as possible, um, see what what's out there, um, and what they might be used for. 
once I pretty much understand what my design is, I'll start to go to SolidWorks, um, which is a CAD program, uh, and start to 3D model this on the computer. Say, so, like, based on the engineering drawings of the CAD model from SolidWorks, I might take this information and these measurements and stuff that I've determined, and then I might go to the physical model, you know, and start to build this and see if uh, this concept works in physical space. So you can say, well, we want to design a pen. We have this as current solution. So you get to say, how many different ways can that be resolved? So you go through research, concept development, finalization, and say, well, it should look like this. You got to keep in mind, like, this is something like a person might want to buy one day. So if I'm drawing a product or something, I, I look for like the functionality of the product and what looks good and and all that stuff, so that's what I look for. That's going to be one of the most exciting things is seeing something that I've designed on the shelf, you know, that people are using and people have in their homes like that, to me, would be uh, one of the best things, you know, it's like my baby, it would be in people's homes and I'm just like, yeah, I designed that. I can affect the world, I can, I can enact some kind of change eventually is uh, really, really heartening. I think it's um, uh, uh, a very satisfying part of what we do. Part of it relaxation, part of it uh, we can earn a living at it, and part of it we can use to help uh, the human condition and improve the lot of those that are less fortunate. So I think it's a wonderful thing. So. I feel like design is, will always um, say more than we could ever like just say it to somebody. Good design speaks for itself, I think. When we do our job well, uh, we're not, um, uh, people don't always know about it. Design is important because it's like everybody has their own style and like shows everyone's personality. Take a moment and try to imagine what would the world look like without art or design? I am seeing a world of just a bleakness. Oh, it'd be pretty boring. I can't even really imagine it. Like there would always, there'd always have to be some type of design. I think this harkens back to the days of the caveman. You know, seriously. I mean, you know, they they had rocks to suffer. You know. That had to be damned uncomfortable, you know? Oh, everything made would be very tasteless, very um, just not interesting. So, as I said before, it's, we'll, we'll, we would basically be living in huts. Things would be very scientific, I think. Um, and art and design tends to be more emotional. I've seen solutions that were done strictly by engineers. They worked perfectly, but they looked crappy. Uh, and if that industrial designer was not around, you'd have a bunch of things that were the perfect solution on the inside, but the outside was never really thought of. So you know, it would be stuff that was halfway solved. Mm -hmm.